Got another question for the paper three questions playlist. So this one's about redox, ideal gas equation, pH of weak acids, conjugate acid base pairs, and the identification of unknowns from quantitative and qualitative data. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So the half equations for the reduction and oxidation processes. So we'll start with the reduction. We've got the oxidation numbers here for sodium. So it starts out at plus one and it goes to zero. So obviously it's been reduced. The sodium one plus ion has gained one electron. So for the oxidation reaction, I'm guessing the N3 species might have caused a little bit of an issue for some people. So if we think about the formula, NaN3, we know it's Na1 plus, so the N3 must be one minus, and that's going to N2. So if we balance the atoms now, so obviously we've got three on one side, two on the other, so we'll get them both up to six, and now we just need to balance the charge. So we've got two minus charge on the left, we've got no charge at the moment on the right, so it must be two electrons on the right. Moving on to the next part, so we've got to calculate the mass of NaN3 that's decomposed. Well, the pressure inside the bag is being caused by the production of the nitrogen gas. So we're going to use the ideal gas equation to calculate the moles of nitrogen that's in the air bag and then apply the ratio backwards to get the moles of NaN3 and then turn that into grams. So ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, and we're rearranging to get the moles of nitrogen. So it's PV over RT. So we'll just put the numbers in now. Pressure's being given in Pascal, so that can go straight in. The volume is in decimeters cubed, so we just times 10 to the minus three, and that puts it into cubic meters. Divided by R, 8.314, multiplied by the temperature, but again, they've given us it in the wrong units. It's in degrees C, but we need it in Kelvin. So we'll just add 273 onto that which gives us 290. Moles of nitrogen comes out at 0 0.79633 dot dot dot. So I've just kept the full number in my calculator. That means the moles of NaN3 is going to be two thirds of the moles of nitrogen. So that's coming out at 0 0.531 moles. So using moles times MR to get the mass, 0 0.531 times 65 to three significant figures, it's 34.5 grams. Moving on to part B, so the pH of the HN3, we're told it's a weak acid. It's actually a weak monobasic acid. It's only one H there anyway. So the H plus concentration of a weak monobasic acid is the square root of Kaha. That's how I remember it. The HA in square brackets means the original concentration of the acid, which is that value there. So putting the numbers in, we're getting an H plus concentration of 1.77 times 10 to the minus three moles per decimeters cubed. So all we've got to do now is minus log that, which to two decimal places gives a pH of 2.75. Moving on to the next part where we've got to come up with the equation for the equilibrium mixture. So obviously the HN3 is going to donate that proton to the H2O, which will generate the H3O plus ion and the N3 minus ion. HN3 is acting as an acid, so we'll make that the acid of pair 1. H2O is obviously acting as a base, so that's the other pair, so that's the base of pair 2. The H3O plus is the acid of pair 2, so A2. And the N3 minus ion is obviously the conjugate base of pair 1, so B1. Moving on to part 3, so we've got this unfamiliar reaction where we're told that hydrozoic acid reacts with carboxylic acids to form primary amines. So I've turned that into sort of a general equation. We're also told that it forms two gases that are found in the atmosphere. So if we think about the atoms that are left over, we've got two ends. So we use one of them there. So there's two ends left and there's C and two O's. So the obvious thing to go for there is carbon dioxide and nitrogen. So now we've got the general equation, we'll just apply it to the actual um, carboxylic acid mentioned in the question, 2-methylbutanoic acid, which gives us this here. So moving on to part C, which I've got to say is quite a tricky question, this, lots of information to process. So hopefully I'll explain it in a way that makes sense. So first thing I'm going to do is look at reaction one. I've generated kind of an equation 
and summarise all the information that we were told at the top of the question. First thing I want to do is work out the moles of copper oxide, because obviously we know the formula of that, and we know the mass of that. And I want to work out um, the moles of gas, because we're told the volume at RTP, and then I can actually work out the MR, because I've got the mass of it as well. So starting with the moles of copper oxide, mass over MR, 0.06. 480 cm cubed at RTP is 0.02 moles. Just divide that by the molar gas volume, but use the cm cubed value, 24,000. So the MR of G, mass over moles, is 28. So the obvious thing to go for is nitrogen for G. So we've actually got one of the letters sorted. So now we've got G sorted, there's a couple of ways you can think about the next part to get E and F. So one way to look at it is to think about the change in oxidation numbers. So nitrogen starts out at minus 3 in ammonia and it goes up to 0 in nitrogen, the element. So nitrogen's been oxidised. So obviously if there's an oxidation process, there's got to be a reduction process. Well, we're told that copper starts out at plus 2. So this E solid could well be copper. So obviously copper, as elemental copper, has an oxidation state of 0. So that is a reduction process. So all we need to do now is sort out what F is. Well, if you look at the atoms we've got left, it's hydrogen and oxygen, so F is likely to be H2O. So moving on to the balanced equation now. So you can see I've just written up the equation again. So let's look at some of these moles that we've got. So we've got a 0 0.06 moles of CuO producing 0 0.02 moles of N2. So we've got a 3 to 1 mole ratio existing between these two species. The moles of copper that's being produced is 0 0.06, which is the same as the moles of copper oxide um, reduced. So therefore, we must have the same number in front of both of those species. So we need a 3 in front of the Cu. So we're looking at the remaining atoms. We've got 1N on the left, we've got 2 on the right. So obviously a 2 needs to go there. And finally, the oxygen, we've got three O's on the left. We've only got one at the right at the moment, so a three in front of that will sort out the equation. So moving on to reaction two now. So we're told H reacts with ammonia and excess of ammonia to form compound I, which has got this molecular formula, and a chloride salt J. So we'll start with the infrared spectrum for I. So there's a couple of key peaks on here that are giving us clues as to which bonds are present. So I'm going to start with this one here. So this is due to C double bond O. The other key absorption is this one here, and this one is due to NH bonds. So at this point in the question, we need to take a little bit of an educated guess as to which functional group could be in this molecule. Well, the amide group has got both the NH bond and C double bond O. So if I does have this functional group in it, then the remaining atoms are a carbon and four hydrogens, which would make I this amide here. Ethanamide is its name. We don't have to give the name. We've just got to give the structure. So that's looking like a possible answer for compound I. So to finish this off and get the structure for H, we need to bring in our knowledge of organic reactions. So we've got, we've produced an amide and we know that there's chlorine involved somewhere in the equation. So what does H need to be? Well, the obvious choice is an acyl chloride, also known as acid chloride, which ties in with the fact that we've formed a chloride salt. So H is looking like it's ethanoyl chloride. So what is the chloride salt? Well, if you think about the definition for salt, it's a substance formed when the H plus ion of an acid is replaced by a metal ion. Well, we've got no metals at all here or an ammonium ion, well as an excess of ammonia, so J is very likely to be ammonium chloride. So the only thing left to do now is balance the equation, so you can see we've got two ends on the right, we've only got one on the left, so we'll put a two in front of the ammonia, and that's that equation sorted.